Advanced Math Lesson 52, The Inviolable Argument and Arguments in Trigonometric Equations. Uh, the inviolable argument is pretty much just a couple of different rules about trigonometric identities that you can't break when solving them as equations. We'll talk more about those in class, but the, the main gist of it is, um, I think I might have actually made one of these mistakes early in the school year because uh, I had forgotten it, is that if you have something like this, tangent 2 of theta, tangent 2 of theta is one idea. It cannot be broken apart like this. You can't divide theta by or 2 theta by 2 because tangent 2 theta is all one term uh, and it can't be split up the way that you normally would in a uh, in a normal equation uh, so what you would have to do is you'd have to divide the entire thing by 2 um, and even then it just kind of makes it a little more complex than actually solving the problem uh, and then the other um, addition to that is if you have cosine of a quantity inside of parentheses that whole parentheses is attached to that single cosine uh, and so the only way you can change that is through substitution uh, the other example which they don't show you uh, which is that's from the previous video if we have cosine of whoops you know actually we'll do it this way so what they have is they wrote cosine 2 pi or sorry 2 of theta minus pi uh, that is one inviolable statement. Now, if they had cosine of 2 pi minus theta, minus theta is not connected to the cosine. Only cosine of 2 pi is inviolable, and that cannot be broken apart. So if there aren't parentheses surrounding this, then I could add theta uh, to both sides of the equation uh, to rewrite it to where I have cosine of 2 pi uh, would equal theta. So uh, inviable is another way of saying that it's a trigonometric statement that cannot be broken apart through algebraic means like division or uh, multiplication. And so being able to spot inviable arguments would be you know ones that have parentheses or the immediate term connected to a cosine, a sine, or a tangent. Now let's go into the examples. Our first example uh, right here, 52.1. They tell us to solve 3 tangent of theta minus 1 equals 0 as long as theta is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 360. So in this case, theta cannot equal 360. So uh, the way that we're going to solve this equation is we're going to look for the inviolable argument. Uh, and like I was just showing above, the inviolable argument here is tangent 3 theta. So that statement cannot be broken apart. However, the minus 1 can because it's not in parentheses. So I'll go ahead and use some algebra to move the negative 1 by adding it to both sides. So then what I'm left with is tangent 3 theta equals 1. And again, tangent 3 of theta is inviolable, meaning we cannot break it apart. So we have to find, um, at this point, what we have to do is find out where tangent equals 1 in between 0 and 360. So, uh, for sake of time on the video, we can either use, do this using uh, reference triangles or uh, referencing our unit circle. Um, so if I look at my unit circle, I'm looking for values where tangent will equal positive 1. So I have to find values where the sine and the cosine are equal to each other. Uh, and I see the first one at 45 degrees, so root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So since those are equal, the tangent would be 1. Keep going, keep going. Um, almost here, but not quite. This would actually be negative 1, since this one's a negative and this one's a positive. So we keep going. Uh, and then here, I see root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, both negative. Uh, so this would be the other positive 1. Uh, here we've got negative 1, and that's it. So the only two places I can see this are at 225 degrees and at 45 degrees. And another way you could find this quickly is by using your uh, quadrant phrase, all students take calculus, all positive, tangent positive. We would know to look here and here. And then 45 degree angles are the only ones where you'll get a tangent of one. So we could use reference triangles very quickly that way to figure out uh, that our two angles are 45 and 225. So for tangent equals, or tangent three theta equals one, we know that three of theta is going to equal 45 or 225. Now, uh, in looking up the unit circle and figuring out what the tangent of 3 theta is, we've figured out, uh, we've undone this tangent technique. So now all we have to do is solve for theta by dividing 45 and 225 by 3. Uh, 45 divided by 3, 225 divided by 3, theta divided by 3. So what that will give us is theta will be equal to 15 
or let's see here, 225, that's going to be 75, 15 or 75, and that is what theta is equal to. Now we'll move on to our next example, which is actually in radian, or wait, no, is it in radian form? No, it's not. Uh, our next example, you see down here. So this one just puts some fractions in the way. Um, again, let's identify the inviable argument. So we have the same uh, domain or range or limitation on our theta, which is equal to and greater than zero, less than 360. And then we've got our trigonometric equation. The inviable argument here is going to be cosine of theta over two. Again, the reason why that is inviable is because there is no parentheses surrounding uh, this whole statement. So the root three over two can be moved. And we'll do that through subtraction, negative root three over two, uh, minus root three over two. That cancels, so now I have cosine of theta divided by two is going to equal negative root three over two. And again, cosine of theta over two is inviable until I compute cosine at negative root three over two. This time I'm gonna go ahead and use um, reference triangles to solve this one. Uh, and so if it's a root three over two, then that means the cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we've got an adjacent side of angle theta being a uh, root three, and then we have a hypotenuse of two, hypotenuse of two, which means that our opposite side is going to be one, because this is our reference, reference triangle of our one, uh, two, root three, being our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Uh, now, uh, to figure out what angles fit here, um, the opposite side of one is going to be the smaller angle of 30 degrees, right? And then the larger angle is going to be 60 degrees. So we have to find all the 30 degree angles on our unit circle where we can come up with negative, where either um, root three is plus or minus or the hypotenuse of two is plus or minus. Or we could just look at the places where cosine is negative on the unit circle. So um, cosine is positive here. Sine is positive here, which means cosine is negative here. Um, Tangent is positive, which means cosine is negative here, and then cosine is positive here. So it's going to be in the second or third quadrant. And then I'm going to be looking for uh, negative root 3 over 2 for our cosine. So if we go for 30 degree angles, 30 degrees off of 90 gives me 120. And then 30 degrees off of 180 gives me um, 210. Wait, nope, that's not the right one. It would be 30 degrees off of 270. Um, wait. Hold on. No, I was right. 210. Root 3 over 2 here, and then I was wrong on this one. Sorry. Root 3 over 2 here, because I forget it goes cosine side. So cosine has negative root 3 over 2 at 150, and then negative root 3 over 2 at 210. Now, if we wanted to keep using our reference triangle to figure this out, all we'd have to do is draw a unit circle, and then travel a negative uh, root 3 on our x-axis and then go a positive 1 uh, over here and that would give me the angle 150 so that would be negative root 3 positive 1 that would give me 150 degrees and then for this one uh, if we go negative 1 and then we travel a positive, wait, no, that's still negative, hold on. Oh, that's right, it's the hypotenuse that has to be negative. Okay, so all students take, yeah. Yeah, if we go negative here and then negative one here, the hypotenuse would still be a negative down here. So that gives us the 210 degrees. Um, from there, once we calculate the cosine at root 3 over 2, and we've got theta over 2 is going to equal 150 or 210. From there, we just multiply each side by 2. Let's do that with um, orange. So times 2, and then times 2, and times 2. These cancel, so then I get theta 
is equal to 300 or 420. Now, can theta be 420? No, because of our domain. So because of our domain, 420 is not possible, which means our final answer is theta is equal to 300. So that's it for this lesson. If you have any questions, let me know on Moodle, and I will see you in class.